Hey, it's Jose here. And I just wanted to let you know that if you have a message to share, I want to tell you about Anchor. It is free and it is an easy way to create a podcast for you to share that message. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. There are certain creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. And most importantly, you can get your message out to the world and impact the lives that you were created to impact. Download Anchor right now. My name is Jose Vargas and I am on a mission to help you create breakthroughs in your personal and professional life so that you can grow and lead your life with excellence. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. In this episode, we're going to be talking about thriving through change. And this is your host, Jose Vargas. I'm honored to be sitting in front of two wonderful ladies, Dr. Sarah Casal. Kisu. Kisu. Sorry, I messed her name up. I, I told her I was going to no mess her name up. Um, she's an experienced and passionate and skillful chiropractor, helping hundreds of patients avoid surgeries and achieve amazing results through natural methods. We also have here a nurse practitioner, Sydney Quick. She's a board-certified family nurse practitioner through the American Academy of Nurse Practitioners. So welcome, ladies. Thank you for being Thank on the you. show. Thank you for inviting us. us. So, Dr. Sarah, let's start with you. Um, so, you're a successful business owner, right? <laughs> she's being fine. humble. She's being <laughs> humble. <Okay. laughs> so, she's doing good. Um, she's a successful business owner here in the Virginia um, area, Northern Virginia area, and uh, she is a doctor. And what we want to talk about uh, thriving through change, you know, change is constant in our world today. And how we grow grow through it would either hurt us or help us. So, Dr. Uh, Sarah, what has been your biggest hurdle as a business owner during the past 2020 pandemic? And what changes that were forced on you that have actually been a blessing in disguise? Okay. Because of pandemic, uh, a lot of patients, they were afraid to come for treatment because due, due to virus. So we lost a lot of business. It wasn't just us basically everywhere. So we were better off than most other clinics. We still opened. We were open basically every day. Uh, we didn't let go of any of our staff. We have, uh, you know, our staff is our family. And we survived. Uh, the first two months, it was kind of hard because we, the business dropped like 50%. And uh, for remaining of the 50% of the patients, they trusted us and they came. We did extra, extra work, extra passion to help them out, make sure the office is ex- very clean, the environment is like germ-free, and uh, slowly business picked up, and we are almost back to the business before COVID. That is awesome. So, of course, it's the financial hardship we had, and the government helped us a little bit with the loan, which has helped for a month, which is better than nothing. But we always work hard. We are always here to help patients, and we brought more varieties of businesses. For example, we have nurse practitioners. We provide stem cells. We do PRP. We are multitasking now uh, to help different type of patients. Wow. That is awesome. So did you implement those changes because of the pandemic or because I know and, and and I can attest to what Dr. Sarah is saying, definitely kept the whole office running. Everything was always clean. I always felt safe coming here. Um, so, uh, yeah. So The changes, matter of fact, uh, like a month before the whole pandemic, the shutdown, basically in March 2020, we had we got into a program to be integrated medicine. Means having medical doctors, nurse practitioners, uh, rehab specialists, and unfortunately hit the COVID Hmm. and it slowed us. And uh, so we, you know, it delayed the whole thing. Now we are back into business full. We are ready to help everybody. That's awesome. 
So many leaders today have had a lot of changes in their routines. You know, many have been forced to w- work from home, um, longer hours, et cetera. What do you think, what are you envisioning or what are you seeing based on your offices and, and your location strategically located everywhere, basically? What health challenges are you ladies seeing today and, and what warnings would you give to leaders listening in as all these changes are okay. taking place? Changes uh, happened and we are kind of back to normal now. So you have to be persistent. You never give up. You have to find different ways. For example, for chiropractic, patients, they have to come for me to treat them. It's not like a telemedicine <laughs> from right. distance, here's prescription or do some exercises. It's face to face. Actually, they have to be present yes. in our situation. So what can you do? You have to survive. You have to do whatever you can. You know, whatever you can, uh, whatever you have, and work with whatever you have. You have this number of patients, give them more varieties of treatment, mm. advise them, pro- make them feel better. They, you know, they, they will feel better, and they will come back, and they tell th- the safety of our procedures, tell their friends and family, come back, you know, don't suffer from your low back pain or headaches. It's good, nothing's going to happen. That's what you can do. This is like we were in surviving. We are almost 90% is done with that terrible era. But this is life, you know, nothing stays the same and you have to deal with whatever it's in front of you. Yeah. Now, do you ladies feel that there a certain like condition has expedited because of COVID? Do you feel like any? Yes. Do you want to speak into that? Yes, that's a great question. I'm getting a lot of patients with low back pain and headaches because Mm. they're working from home. They're ITs, for example, and they sit and there's chairs. They're not comfortable like their own offices. Mm -hmm. They get low back pain. They come in and I help them out and I teach them what kind of chairs they need to buy, the desk up and down sitting, the, the standing desk, and also how to uh, you know, position their body with the eye level, with their monitors to help with the headaches and then give them exercises you know, uh, and uh, you know, some more, depends yeah. on their conditions. Yeah, I know that last time we were here, we were talking to Dr. Hatam, and he spoke on that this new thing, this new phenomenon, basically, text neck. You know, it, it, so he's, that's something that he's seen specifically. Um, what would you say uh, then is it, it, one tip that you would have for, for the people working from home or people who are experiencing lower back pains, neck pains, headaches, um, these challenges? What would you, how, how does that correlate with their effectiveness as being a leader? Okay, so uh, it depends, you know. So uh, if they have low back pain, for example, sitting like eight, 10 hours, you have to advise them to have a better chairs, more ergonomics desk, yeah. have like a, a, something like a support for their chair, get up every hour, five, 10 minutes, move, drink lots of water, motion is good. Uh, well, basically, and then uh, after they're done with their work, then they can do some stretching stretching mm-hmm. and then they can find a, a time to come for us to evaluate and help them out because mm-hmm. sometimes you can advise them this much but right. it's not the whole thing right right that's good you want to add i'd like to add to that yeah so i definitely think um awareness is the key when it comes to um, health and the patient staying at home especially with upper and low back pain Um, something that I've recently learned is that sitting is the new smoking Mm. Um, more than eight hours a day of sitting has the benefit or the health um, consequences as if you were smoking so it's slowly creeping up to become a huge killer um, in America and um, you know society because we have so many people working from home now so I'd say you know the biggest one of the biggest things and I agree with Dr. Kasu is that 
um, we're not aware of what the problem is. So if you're not aware, how do we fix it? So for um, patients, I agree, getting up every hour, stretching, um, activities. You know, we're a very career-driven society, but we can't um, succeed in our careers if we're not taking care of our bodies. That's great. So um, very important to get up, to stretch, to, to walk at least 30 minutes a day, um, get your heart going. And then also um, with the text net, like we were talking about, um, and the low back pain, to make sure that your phone and that your computer is at eye level, not constantly looking down um, because unfortunately in today's society too when we have the neck pain instead of fixing the problem we're fixing the symptoms mm. so we're, we're handing out you know Motrin um, mm. all of the different um, so true. pain medications instead of fixing the problem so I would say awareness and prevention should be number one um, mm. and then secondly fixing the source of the problem and not masking the symptoms and that's what I think you know, the integrated medicine here at for Virginia Family um, Integrated Medicine is kind of moving towards um, is prevention. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's so so key and so important. What you, I, lo- I love what you said because I, I think a lot yeah. of times leaders, we tend to be so busy that mm-hmm. we, we try to medicate the problem and not really find a solution or, or the root of that problem. Mm-hmm. And what you ladies are doing here is you're helping people find the root cause of their pain which is so important. And really, pain is a way of the body telling you, hey, something's wrong, right? So now let's switch gears a little bit. Um, What would you say then is, and I want to hear from both of you, what would you say is one attribute um, as you're you're leading in this sphere of of medicine, um, what would you say is one attribute that every person of influence must possess uh, to be not only successful, but significant within their world? So... One thing that stands out to me is compassion. Mm. You can't be successful in uh, medicine or in any field without compassion. So I would say you have to love what you do um, because you're not going to have a a good day every day. But when you're helping um, people and you're compassionate about what you do, um, you're going to, in the long term, be happy and you're going to be successful. So that would be the one thing that, that I would say. I love it. And also, you have to be curious. Mm. Mm. That's so good. <laughs> so Never good. stop finding plan A doesn't work. Mm. Go plan B, plan C. Wow. Get help from other specialists. Mm-hmm. Yes. Do more imaging. Mm-hmm. For example, MRI, CAT scan, blood test. Wow. And always ask more questions from patients because mm. they don't tell you everything. Ask wow. more questions. Keep asking till you get to know who they are, their mm. habits, their injuries, mm. what they like, what kind of job they had their entire life. Because most of the issues when they come in, they said, I don't know, I just get up with the pain. I don't know, I never had it before. We have two types of basically pain. One, it's gradual. It mm. builds up over decades. Another one, you have an injury, you fall, of course, you have pain. Mm-hmm. But for gradual one, it's kind of more dangerous one. Mm-hmm. You have to go dig in into, mm-hmm. and you have to spend time. And sometimes patients, it's so hard to get information. And I tell them <laughs> once in a while, I joke around, I said, hey, I'm not a psychic. <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> tell me. The more you tell me, I can help you more. Wow. So you have to have this element. You have to. Wow. Otherwise, how can you diagnose? The toughest thing so is diagnosis by asking questions and spending time. Wow. Wow. You know, those are two powerful key principles for every leader, you know. Um, and it translates into every industry, really. You know, to be compassionate, right? Mm-hmm. And, to, and to be curious. curious. That's... You know, and I think oftentimes when we're in leadership roles, we lose that compassion and we lose that curiosity. We stop asking questions. I can personally attest to to how this office has helped me because you guys have stayed curious. You were always asking questions. Hey, you know, and and I remember going to different doctors. They just wanted to medicate medicate me, Mm -hmm. you know. And and so I found a breakthrough in my health here because of the curiosity of, of you guys, your, your leadership and being curious and being compassionate. So I thank you for that as well. So, you know, I'm a firm believer and we're almost wrapping up here, but 
I'm a firm believer that in order to know someone, to understand where they are today, we have to know their story, a little bit of their story. So I can't let you ladies go without knowing a little bit of where you've been. Um, what you know? Tell me your journey. How did you get to a successful doctor? You know, successful uh, nurse practitioner. I want to hear your, a little bit of your story. Um, I started being a computer science, and then I finished my computer science and uh, two degrees and minor in math. And when I started finishing my master in computer science. Midway, I kind of got bored. I mm. didn't understand it. To me, it was kind of boring. And I kind of stopped and uh, started working. And then uh, I was very good at whatever I was doing. And then I wanted to learn more. And accidentally, I had a friend. He was a new graduate uh, as a chiropractor. So I uh, got interested because he treated me for my headaches. It was fascinating. Then I became a chiropractor. And uh, and life is not easy. When you graduate, you have tons of student loan. And in my case, I had to take care of two little kids and a family and no money. Wow. Uh, necessity. Mm. You choose to be stronger or you go down. Mm. So I chose to win in life. Mm, so so I used to work seven days a week. If wow. somebody needed me Christmas, I was there. 10 wow. p.m., I was there. So I, for 10 years, I've worked wow. six and a half days, 12 hours a day. Wow. So then I started hiring more people. Then I, you know, you, know, you just uh, take one quarter of this business and you share with other people. So still you have to wow. stay hungry mm. and curi curious and never wow. stop learning. We don't know everything. Yeah. I think I don't know much, but I know more than a lot of other yeah. chiropractors. I can Absolutely. tell you. Absolutely. I can prove it to you. Yes. Not because I'm obnoxious, I'm humble. Right. I need to learn. Yes. I love to learn. Anything I, I learn, I love it. I feel like a flower. I need mm. water. Mm. Wow. So this is, <laughs> so uh, this is when am I stop working? I'm working for 25 years continuously in this business. Wow. I never know. I'm going to, because I, I gain a lot of experience. I want to use it even physically. Maybe I can, I won't be able to adjust patients as much when I get older, but I can share my knowledge. I can diagnose people because mm. I can write books truthfully in how to treat a patient. So mm. I don't want to lose that aspect wow. of the helping people because mm. bottom line is helping patients. I feel good. Mm. Wow. That's my journey. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Man, there were so many good pieces in there that I wanted to just pull apart. Um, but, you know, and I think that's what makes a great leader, you know, um, and just hearing your passion. And I mean, and just even interacting with you here, just hearing your passion and your your love for your patients. And I really do believe that you have to love the people that you're you're leading. Um, so thank you for sharing that. You're wow. That, so you. many good nuggets in I there. Know. <laughs> yeah, I want to start with saying I'm very grateful to work here with Dr. Kasu and Dr. Tom and all the other um, staff. But I definitely feel like I resonate a lot with Dr. Kasu because she is a very compassionate woman that stays hungry and is taught so um, many people a lot and so that's an awesome thing for somebody who's kind of starting out um, to have as a role model um, to look up to to stay hungry like she said so I just want to start with saying that wow. um, my story I decided I wanted to be a nurse practitioner in the seventh grade so wow. I sat down with my parents I was kind of that kid that was like had my life planned out um, before wow. I ever necessary <laughs> you're the lucky one <laughs> I lucky. know that's awesome no so, waste of time <laughs> yeah so uh, I sat down and decided I wanted to do that. My, my mom, my dad, and I, we kind of just made a game plan from there, and I followed it to a T. Wow. Um, I graduated with my bachelor's in nursing from Marshall University um, and started working in the emergency um, department in Huntington, West Virginia. Um, I don't know how familiar you are with the um, opioid epidemic there, but, um, well, actually in this whole country, 99% right. of the drugs... 
um, used in the entire world are used in the United States. 99%, wow. the other 1% is the rest of the world. Wow. Yeah. So um, in Huntington, West Virginia, where I started, um, it is, I can't remember the exact number, but most of America's um, um, opioids are used there. So we had constant heroin overdoses, things like that. That's when I really became passionate about preventative medicine. You know, how did these people become ad so addicted to pain medicine that they're overdosing and killing themselves for it? Mm. How can we stop that? Um, so wow. later um, I went back and did my master's um, nurse practitioning um, at the University of Texas, um, where I also worked in the emergency department. And um, really that curiosity kept growing. Um, when I moved to Washington, D.C., um, I got lucky enough to get a job here where we are um, working to rehab patients and prevent them um, from getting onto medis uh, medications that could potentially, um, you know, cause them to be addicted for the rest of their lives or completely change the course That's of their awesome. lives. So it was really cool to see it come full circle. Um, to, to have worked in the reactive part where we're giving medications to prevent patients from dying because they've taken too, too many um, pain pills or have become addicted and started using heroin to now um, getting to prevent patients from ever, you know, touching that pill for the first time. Hmm. So it's, it's neat to, to see it come for full circle. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Great job. Wow, yeah, great <laughs> and job. you're very lucky to have Cindy. Wow. She's awesome. She's very caring. She's humble. She is passionate. And wow. she's a nice person. Yeah. On wow. top of I can I can tell. <laughs> well, is there one one more final thought that you want to leave with the listeners? Um, and maybe some of them are in the Virginia area that you would like to say to them or any any final thought that you would like to share with in the audience. My regards. Um, um, always uh, do, you know, Respect your body. Mm. Just even you don't have pain, come and do your examinations, a spinal exam, because the nerves comes out of the spine, controls every cell, every tissue, every organs of the body. You don't want to feel sick to come for treatment. Come and prevent. Mm. So respect your body, respect your soul. That's my message. Wow. Hey, that's all. Oh, that was powerful. I mean, <laughs> thank you so much, doctor. Thank you so much, um, nurse practitioner Sydney Quick. Um, and I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.